that I got. So I went to do a curbside pickup for Final Round Game Shop, which is my local shop here in South Carolina. And Nerve Room's not all the way together yet, but it's coming along. Hopefully soon we'll do this and Chris can actually come over and we'll have the table set up and yeah, it'll be, be a lot more professional, but I did want to put a video out just because I started playing God Tier mostly because of Chris, but really impressed with the game. It plays fun, the models are cool looking, and it's just a lot of fantasy background and just a ton of fun for people to play. If you haven't gone on Tabletopia yet and played God Tier, I'd at least give it a shot because it's a fun game. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go through the Eternal Blade starter set, which is one of the starters from Steamforge for God Tier. The other one has the other two types of champions in it. This one has a Slayer in it, which I believe is Morgan. And then we have a Shaper. And I'll have to look up her name as we unbox it. I can't remember her name off the top of my head. And then we're also going to go through four, one of each of the different types of champions that we have. We have Half Tusk over here. We have Wraith Marid, Marid, Grimgut, and then Sneaky Pete. So, really excited about these different models. They look really good. Really excited to see what they look like once they're out of the box. So we're going to start with the starter first. We'll go through it, and then we'll start kind of going through each of the champions. So I, I already looked at one of these because I painted it for Jacob, and I would recommend getting one of the starters at least that way you guys can go ahead and make sure that you guys get at least the core essentials that you guys need to play the game so what we're going to do is look at what we got so we're going to start right off the top i'm just going to put this stuff back that way i can kind of pull it out as we go through so the first thing that you're going to get that you're going to need to play is the board because obviously you can't play this game on a normal board space because it's hex system uh, you could probably create your own maps, but it's going to be a little challenging if you do that. Um, I think you could measure these out and then create your own grid coordinates. And if you have that capability, great. Uh, but if you're like me, don't really have that ability to do it. So let's look at both sides of this map and then we'll kind of go from there. So the first side that we have, and I'm just going to pull it out just so you guys can kind of see. So we have this forest kind of looking grid and at first when I looked at it it was kind of hard to read but it's actually not too bad um, I would say only when you get down to this part it's hard to see where the hexes are for some of the trees and stuff um, also kind of in the starter zone some of this kind of muddies together on the other side of this I'll pull it up so you guys can see it so this kind of muddies up a little bit with some of the hexes but Generally speaking, it looks really good. Now let's see what this other side looks like. So the other side looks like some kind of wasteland. This one's actually pretty well defined. I think this is the side I'd probably play on more. But if you look at it, really cool looking. And then you got the slide up on the uh, side to decide who's winning. I like this side better. It's a little more defined, a little crisp looking. Whereas the other side can get a little muddied up, it looks like folds back in place so that's pretty cool slide that over has the rule book I believe this you can also download offline or online so quick reference on the back I found this to be really helpful on the back so if you guys look at this it has a lot of the details that you need for what the different tokens are the phases what actions you can take skills and then how you move up the battle ladder to get your points so this rule book is pretty easy, straightforward, really good graphics, and pretty well defined. Yeah, so we got Slayers, which is our red guy here. We have our Shapers, Green, Maelstroms, and then finally Guardians. Which I don't know about other people, I'm really digging Guardians so far, their playstyle. I haven't played with the Green yet, so the Shapers I haven't messed with. I've done a couple games with the Malastrums. I haven't played any of the Slayers, so I'm actually really excited to mess with the other two character types that I haven't messed with yet. Okay, so you get the cards to help you place 
your cards for each of your champions. And I believe there's three of these in here at least. Let's see how many they give us. Sorry for the plastic. Okay, open it up. It'd be great if there were six of these. Ideally. I'm just going to throw that away. Okay, so in these you get one, two, and three. So you get three of them. So that's enough for one person to have all three of their champions. Not enough for that. It's probably They probably did that so you would want to buy one of the starter boxes and then buy the other one. That way you could get six that way. I haven't opened up any of these yet. I would assume one of these is in with each one of them. But once again, don't know that. We'll give my overall review of all the stuff when it's said and done. Okay, so we have all of these different cardboards. Now this is great because this lets you basically play the game. You don't have to go to uh, Muse on Minis. You don't have to go to Frozen Forge to buy tokens. You can because they put great quality products out for acrylics. But you can play this game right away just because you have all these tokens. You don't have any electronics. Just play it straight out of the box, which is something I know Steamforge has been really pushing as they continue to release great products like these. So really awesome to see. So these are your objective hexes, those of you who haven't gotten into the game yet. These are your boons and blights. The plus sides are your boons. If you look on the back, they're black with negatives. Those are your blights. Those are the negatives you put on your opponents. Damage markers, how many points you get per turn. All looks great. Just cardboard though, not great quality, but it's thick cardboard. This stuff's not bending easy, so this stuff's going to be really good on the table. All right, then we get cards. So cards for both of the champions and their followers as I throw it on the ground. Okay, nice solid card stock. Going to be interesting because I think I have some clear sleeves I can use for these. Because they are double-sided. When you pull this out and you look at it, you're just going to pop it open. Of course, if I can get it open. There we go. Once again, sorry for the plastic. But if you look at them, you have the side and then it flips. So if you are going to sleeve them, you have to make sure that they're clear. That way you can see both sides, which I think I do have some actually really good um, sleeves. Okay, so we have that. We also have 10 of the dice, which if you haven't seen these dice, they're they're nice quality. Steam Forge always gives you good, good dice when you look at the game that they put out. So you have 10 of them. If you haven't seen these dice yet, you have two blank sides, okay? And then you have three of the singles, and you have one side that has two hits. So as you roll this, you're like, oh, I need to get at least three hits. So you roll them, okay, you got at least three you hit, and then you roll damage, be like, okay, you're gonna subtract three off this because your armor. Boom, did two damage. So the dice are cool, they can be a little swingy. I've seen some crazy things happen just in the handful of games that I've played. But they are fun, it's fun. Unless you, they go cold on you, then it can be really frustrating. Okay, so then we have the two different champions. Okay, so I believe, let me check this shaper. This is Naya, so we have Naya and Morgan. So Naya is the shaper. We'll get a little closer up as we kind of look at them. Pull these little stone dudes out. Okay, and then we got Morgan, who's this like necromancer looking skeleton. And she has these undead skeleton warriors with her. For him. Hard to kind of tell. Undead. I haven't read the fluff on them yet. And each of these comes with a banner, which is great because when you want to do the claim action, you got it. And that's the only thing. Chris actually has the Kickstarter version of God Tier models. And the models are great. They're metal, which has good quality. They don't have the banners though. The banners aren't something that I think came with the Kickstarter, so it's kind of interesting to see. So all the plastic is going to be colored according to whether they're a Slayer or a Shaper, Guardian, or Malstorm, which is great because you can play it right out of the box and you know that's what I'm supposed to be doing. So first thing we have is we have 
Naya, which it's kind of almost like a dwarf kind of geomancer looking woman. Really kind of cool model. Awesome. And then she has these three kind of stone stone followers. And when I first saw them in pictures, I thought they were a little underwhelming. But they actually kind of look cool. You could do a lot of cool stone effects with that. You could almost do some like crystal effects. Just depends on really how you want to shape them and make them look when you paint them up. All right. So she has those. And her... <laughs> I mean, this is kind of an interesting banner. It's like a stone that has an opening where it has like kind of crystals in it. So it's kind of interesting. Now Morgan looks really cool. Morgan has a lot of detail in the cloak. Skeletons are always some of my favorite things to paint. This looks really cool. Good quality plastic too. This stuff's not bending that much. Like if I move this, it's not really bending. It's a solid. This is not going to snap off easily. It's a really cool model. Okay. The Skeletal Warriors all look pretty cool. They're pretty basic as far as weaponry goes. But they have pretty good detail. The only thing that's kind of odd is they're almost like a new dead. Because if you look at them, they actually have some muscles on them. If you look at the legs, those aren't bones. Almost like muscles or just you could paint it as almost a dead flesh. And the base actually has some effect on it too. The base has kind of some like whirlwind type effect on it. Almost like maybe they're coming out of the ground. Which is interesting because when you look at Naya's, that doesn't have any kind of texture on it at all. The only thing I am going to notice is there is a slight warp on one of the bases of the rune or the golems whatever you want to call them Let's see what they're actually called let's call them by their actual name right the quartzlings the quartzlings so this quartzlings base and you can see it pretty easily has a good bend to it but the thing is it's not like flimsy so whatever caused it to do that probably when it was cast and then it cooled like that and me throwing it on the ground because it's garbage but the other two hmm almost looks like even Naya's has like a slight bend to it right they still fit flat on the table so there's not like it's not terrible but it is something to notice that it does have a little bit of that. Which I wouldn't have a problem with, but I know some people that when they would buy it like that, that would really bug them. Uh, that's the first time I've seen that with the starters. Um, but I'm sure if you said something to either Steamforge or your the person that you bought it from or company, that they would switch this out for you. I'm not that upset about it because I, I can bend it back a little bit when I'm kind of painting them up. So that's not going to bug me too much. And then Morgan's flag banner is also pretty cool. It's got this stones kind of spikes. And then it has some skulls and some flames in the banner. So pretty cool. Okay. And you get an extra bag in there. And that's pretty much it. That's the box. So really for... Depends what your store and what you get it online for. But... Doing a quick search on this, most of these starter sets you can get for like, what, 75 bucks maybe? Let's do a quick search on like Amazon. So, God Tier Eternal Glade Starter Set. Yeah, so, oh, it's not even that expensive. Sorry, I just kind of had it in my head that it was a lot more pricey than that. I'm finding it on like Atomic Games where you can get the starter for like 40 bucks. That's really good. Uh, some places you get it for like 45. I think the highest that I'm seeing it, the starters is like 45. Yeah, so that's a that's a great deal, because I mean these the champion sets. Let's look them up real quick. Yeah, 
I mean, so these sets with the champions are costing you about 25, 30 bucks, depending on where you get them. So the fact that you're getting for almost the price of two of these, you're getting the two champions, the boards, the dice, cards, cutouts, that's a great deal. And it's gonna get you playing the game. So really smart move on Steam Force part to include one of each type in each starter, right? And this is, <laughs> Morgan's the one that Chris hates because he didn't kill anything when we did the Tabletopia game and he was so pissed at Morgan for not killing anything. So we'll go ahead and put these back in and then we're gonna look at the other champions that we have. And they go straight in the box pretty well. Uh, let's see here. I'm not gonna worry too much if they're in the correct spot as long as they're close. Okay, that's about right. Nine is actually pretty cool. I didn't know if I'd like that. I'm gonna look at the abilities and see what are some of the cool abilities that she has. But generally speaking, pretty cool. All right, there's a spot in here for the cards. So we'll put the cards in there. Now let's put this up with the rule book. And then finally, the map. And it goes back in, so even if you don't have any foam or anything, it's just nice and neat and goes in the box and you can just keep it there, okay? So once again, that's the Eternal Glade starter box. I'll talk a little bit more about what I think about the other champions in this box at the end, just for kind of your bang for your buck type deal. So let's start with these two. Actually, this is the newer stuff. Let's go with the older stuff. So we're gonna go with Half Tusk. And I'm gonna figure out how to say this other guy's name. So Half Tusk and then Wraith Marid. Wraith Marid. Sounds right. So this is your Shaper, and then you have your Guardian. I've been enjoying Guardian a lot as far as playstyle goes. Uh, I've only played that in Maelstrom though, so I haven't messed around with the other two yet, but I assume I will soon. So let's go ahead and take a look at, we'll do the Wraith Married first. And this is the first time that I've unboxed one of these champion boxes. Okay, there's gonna be tape on this, isn't there? Damn, you just need boards if there's tape. There's not, oh thank God. So in the old Guild Ball boxes, this used to have tape on it and you used to have to mess around with it. Hmm. Maybe they didn't, that's kind of disappointing. There's nothing in the bottom. Okay. So that comes off. Yeah, so that's a little disappointing. I was hoping we'd have more of the cards uh, that you could put for your champions on there. But apparently, no, which is fine. Okay, why are you not popping out? That's kind of annoying too. We'll get the models out and then we'll mess with it. Good quality boxing though. Okay, let's get these. These almost look like the beer sprites from uh, World of Warcraft. He's a hefty model, man. That guy, even though it's slow PVC. Oh, you're taped on there. That's weird. Okay. All right. Okay. It's all right. So you do get the cards, which is good. You need the cards to play, right? You can download them too. Steamforge does have a site that you can use to download them. So this is Wraith Marid. And he's kind of this lizard. Has a lot of this cool kind of jade armor on there. Really cool looking. Hold them up a little bit so you guys can see them better. Really cool model. Has kind of these dual daggers that he goes slashing around. And then these are his followers. They're called the Splashlings. Hmm. Interesting. And they're they're kind of cool. Like I said, it's almost like Pandaria in World of Warcraft with all these sprites and elementals kind of all over the place. They're really cool looking, and these I don't see any kind of real bend to as far as the bases go. The models look great, just looking at the sculpt quality, real crisp. Uh, looking at it, trying to see if there's any mold lines. Don't really see a lot of mold lines on these. There's a little one on the back of this calf here. You guys can't quite see that just because I'm not zooming in on it. And there's a slight mold line kind of on the daggers, but besides that, Really kind of crisp and clean. Ah, there's another one. That one you can actually probably see if I hold it up here. On his knuckle. 
There's just a really kind of defined mold line, mold line right there. So you just take an X-Acto knife and his, that's actually, it's simple, but his banner is actually pretty cool. I like that. I like the, I like the diversity of these banners. I didn't like it in Guild Ball. You used to get a ball and it was always the same. It's just a plain kind of ball. But with these guys, really cool that each banner is different. He does have a model that is in the Kickstarter. And that's the only thing I will say is that I feel like his model for that Kickstarter was better than this model. It looks good, but the other one I will say is better, the metal one. Because I have seen that Chris does have that one. But I wanted this guy because he just looks cool. He's going to be a lot of fun to paint. Okay, we'll put all that back. So that was Wraith Murid. He is one of the shapers. I'm not looking at his abilities just because you can read the cards. He's been out for a while. He's not like brand new. Sneaky Pete, I might look at his abilities a little bit though. Okay. And then we have Half Tusk. I had a blast with this guy online. He hangs around in the middle. He has the ability to regenerate. And he just looks like a big bruiser. He just looks like he's going to sit in the middle of the table and just cause just headaches for your opponents. Okay. Regenerating four hit points a turn is pretty good, turns out. Alright, so same thing. Cards, models, simple. So Half Tusk. His, his followers so far, and obviously I haven't played everything, but his followers, the Froglodytes, are my favorite. They are my favorite models. As far as in play, and name, and what they do on the table. And I'll show you, they have a lot of character in those models. So first, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to kick the camera. So we have Half Tusk. He's a big kind of troll looking dude called Half Tusk because one of his tusks he has is half. And once again, the quality of this, like this sword is not flimsy. I'm giving it a good amount of push here and it's not moving. It's not rubbery like a lot of board game models that you would get. He kind of has these weird troll dreads. That's kind of cool. Does he have... That's kind of gnarly, dude. So if you look, there's certain parts where he has like almost wounds and there's like maggots coming out of the wounds. It's kind of gnarly. I like it. Okay, the Froglodytes though, just have so much character. They're like smiling at you. Look really ridiculously cool. Really like these Froglodytes. Somebody's gonna, so if, if you watch this, just give me a heads up. Let me know. Oh man, that's a bad mold line though. So if you look right here down this can, there's a mold line that goes all the way from his back all the way down to his foot. That's gonna be a pain to clean. It's not, and when I say, I'm pointing out mold lines, it's not something that's terrible. But if I paint without cleaning that up, it's gonna be like, why does your model have a line going down it, right? Do you have any bad mold lines on Half Tusk? So Half Tusk himself doesn't have, and that's good, because obviously the champion's gonna be the one that you kind of focus on a little bit more. But honestly, he doesn't have hardly any mold lines, so that's great to see. Really good quality on him. The troglodytes, you can see one now. On, yeah, even this troglodyte, which his facial expression's awesome. Just kind of smiling at you like, Rrr right but really cool but i was going to say before i looked at the mold lines what is everybody doing as far as the basing goes because you can base this simple and black but i'd like to put a little bit of texture or something on the base so i'm just if you have some cool basing ideas for it's like some kind of drum or something his skulls in it it's interesting so if you have ideas on how to base some of this uh god tier stuff hit me up I'm kind of interested on what people are doing as far as that goes. In game, this guy's a beast. He does cool things. He can push people back. He has like a one-two punch where he can punch you and then punch you again immediately after. So really cool. But yeah, if you have basing tips for God tier, uh, either reply here in the video or go ahead and hit me up on Twitter or hit Chris up on Facebook with the Facebook. Uh, rage quit wire or rage underscore quit 
underscore wire on Twitter. Just what are you guys doing for basing for these models? So we got our shaper, we have our guardian, and now we're gonna look at our other two. So we have Grimgut, who I took him almost as a challenge because Grimgut looks like a poop demon. He looks like the great unclean one. He looks like the poop demon from Dogma. And I took it as a challenge that I'm like, I'm going to paint this guy up so he looks good. Which is going to be a little bit of a challenge and we're going to accept it and do it. So we have Grimgut, who is a Maelstrom. He gets extra points by killing followers. And then we have Sneaky Pete, who's a Slayer, who is great at killing champions. But we'll see how he does it. I'm actually going to look at the cards on him because I haven't looked at it yet. He'll be our last one. So Grimgut, the Vile, and the Wretchlings. I played this online, the half game that Chris and I played before we both had to count. Well, I had to bounce just because dinner was ready and dinner waits for no man. So, same thing, cards in there, and then you got the models. So we got Grimgut. Ooh, he has like a pot. What about you guys are little? He'll just fall out there. All right, we have these little retchlings. Now the retchlings actually don't do a ton, and they don't move. They depend on the champion to move. So all you see is kind of this bright yellow blob here. So let's see kind of mold lines, cleanness. He's a big chunk of model. <laughs> oh my god! So if you look at him. If you've seen, what was that, Scary Movie, Scary Movie 2, where they're making fun of all the 90s horror movies, they have the butler that has the tiny hand. He's like, grab my strong hand, and it's like his tiny hand. He has like this tiny baby fist, and he's like fist pumping in the air. And then he has this honking huge fist that he's going to slam you with. Real gnarly. He is a kind of grotesque looking model. He's almost like stitches off of like Heroes of the Storm. World of Warcraft, right? Almost got that Stitches vibe to it. Probably going to paint him a little similar to like a Great Unclean one. Oh man, his banner is probably my favorite so far. Has these retchlings coming out of it. It's like a cauldron. That's a cool banner. I dig that. Cool. I like that. And the retchlings just look like boogers. <laughs> I'm sorry. Boogers with these little skulls on them. So probably little followers that he's killed, puts them in the pot, and they just kind of come crawling out, and little snot boogers of dead dead followers that uh, he has definitely killed. So the mo so I was making fun of this model a lot. The pot's cool. He's actually not as terrible looking as I first thought. Okay, when I first started looking at this online, I was like, this is the worst model. But I think I can paint him up to make him look pretty cool. Right? It's going to be kind of... It's going to be a little gross. But it might be cool. We'll see how that turns out. What is this fluff? What is it? So the cool thing is on the back of this, they tell you kind of a brief, like, hey, this is what this uh, champion does. And it tells you basically lots of things about it. But apparently Grimgut... Is a wicked sight enough to trouble the bravest of souls. Grimgut is a lumbering mass of spoilt flesh, truly earning the alas, the alias of the vile. Unlike others who seek to attract a band of followers, Grimgut instead creates the wretchlings, the remains of those unfortunate enough to find their way into his gullet. Yeah, so these aren't people that want to follow him. These are people that he has straight up killed and now they belong to him. Really kind of gnarly. So, not as bad as I thought he was. I was actually, I took this model as a challenge because I knew a lot of people thought the model looked stupid. But now that I look at him, I'm like, okay, I can do something with this. I've painted a lot of Nurgle before, and he has a very great unclean one kind of feel to him. So, I'm actually not, not as kind of just challenged. I actually kind of a little excited to paint him now. Okay, Grimgut going in. And then we got our last guy, my namesake, Sneaky Pete. You always do this. <laughs> you always do this, Pete. Okay, we got Grimgut. Sneaky Pete. This model looks cool. Like, if you like goblins, phew, watch out. This one's... The art's even cool. He has these goggles. 
It's my man. All right, let's see what he got. Now, I'm gonna look at the cards because I have not even remotely looked at this. Untrustworthy and sly, all goblins are loathed, but special hatred is reserved for the maligned. Sneaky Pete's rapid rise to leader of the Sneaky Stabbers has as much to do with the blood of his rivals as it does the animal cunning or foretold destiny. I like it. All right, Sneaky Pete, what you got? So, we got Sneaky Pete. We'll look at the model here in a minute. You have three gobos that come with them. Oh man, super cool. And you got this banner that's pretty interesting. Ooh, wait till you see that. So he almost has this kind of pirate vibe to him, and I'll show you why I kind of say that here in a minute. All right, we'll look at the cards after we look at the model, but I am going to pull them out real quick. That way we can kind of get a gander at it. So really cool, really excited about this character. Like once, <laughs> so I kind of posted this on Twitter when I talked about it. But as soon as I saw Sneaky Pete, I was like, you son of a bitch. I'm in. All right, so we'll go over Sneaky Pete here in a minute. So Sneaky Pete model looks really cool. I love that they included a base that has some character to it. It's not just the black base. So we have some kind of rock, and there's a lot of brine on it. So it's almost like I'm going to do probably a water effect with these bases. Use some caulk or something to make it look like waves kind of crashing up on this rock. Yeah, there's a lot of brine. You can even see on his back. He almost looks almost like not just a goblin, but he also has like some aquatic kind of animal traits. So he's kind of underwater a lot. Probably why he has those goggles. He's going snorkeling. Really cool model. I'm excited to paint this up. I got some ideas now that I'm thinking about it. And more, I say the pirate because... We see he has some kind of scaled animal that he's kind of used as his banner. But also on the back side, there's a tentacle that's going up the back side. Really cool effect. I love that banner now that I'm looking at it. I thought it was kind of plain looking at, on, looking at it from that side. But then you notice that there's a tentacle kind of rising up out of that. Really cool. The goblins have a very similar feel to Sneaky Pete can tell they've been killing kind of underwater creatures most of their life, it looks like. Oh, uh, let's see. This guy has some... Yeah, it's kind of interesting. It's like kind of this weird sickle that he has. Kind of weird. Then we have another kind of backstab, and this guy's a little more hulked out. This guy's been hitting the gym up a little bit. You can see he's a little, little beefier. A little beefier goblin. Uh, let's look at these cards, and then we'll kind of give my final thoughts about this. All right, so I'm gonna I'm not gonna give you kind of every word of it, but just the things that kind of um, pop up for me. So he has a legendary called Pounce. So before the hit roll, you may place Sneaky Pete on a hex adjacent to the target. So before the hit roll, on Pounce. So it lets him get up, move. That's kind of cool. So you can use this to move, get up close, and I'm assuming hit his probably other melee, which are probably one range. So let's him jump next to a target. All right. Hmm. Okay, so we got his legendary, or his ultimate's kind of cool. Uh, let's see here. When he's, holy crap, dude. So his defensive trait is a five. So move that a little closer. Five is pretty good. He's super hard to hit. He only has five boxes, but man, five's tough. He's decently fast. He can move three in the plot phase. He has a leap ability and backstab. If this if this attack hits a champion, the champion gains one wound. Hmm. So he just auto, like, if he hits, he just does one. That's cool. Stabbing away. And that's in the plot phase. So he can do an attack in the plot phase. It's crazy. And then finally, on his actual damage side, uh, he only has one armor, though. So if you hit him, you're probably doing damage and stuff. He only moves one. So he's actually most mobile in the plot phase. He only moves one during the clash phase. Still has evasion five. 
Uh, he can plot revenge. He can give himself plus to hit. He has annoy. So when he hits, move target two hexes towards Sneaky Pete. And then finally he has backstab, which is this attack hits a champion. The champion gains one wound. So he has backstab on both abilities. So he can do auto two wounds a turn as long as he hits. He's rolling five dice, which isn't terrible. So, yeah, he's just kind of pinging damage. So that would be good, good against, like, Rodri, the dwarf, who has a ton of armor. Uh, let's see, the backstabbers. They can sprint. So they can move one of their models three hexes. Uh, five evasion, too. So once again, they have let me do it. Can So they can attack during that turn. Holy crap, dude. So they have the ability to basically do an attack also during the plot phase which is really interesting and they are small and sneaky so they can move through other models hexes but cannot end on those hexes and they can do that in both phases um you can sneak one so you can remove one sneaky stabber from the battlefield and then move it to basically do a recruit action uh let's see here they have irritate which is minus accuracy so yeah they're not great they're just going to be mobile and helpful to sneaky pete himself really interesting really interesting slayer not gonna if you were gonna do god tier competitively you wouldn't use him all the time but if i saw somebody drop you know what, maybe you do use him all the time just for guardians because guardians are really traditionally pretty easy to hit hard to wound so he's just doing a constant couple wounds onto people wouldn't play against Finvar, probably. Finvar is probably a good counter to him. Because Finvar has a pretty decent defensive save, or defensive trait. So yeah, Sneaky Pete, really cool model. Does some really different things. And by all means, I'm not super familiar with all the matchups yet. So I know I'm kind of just saying some stuff on where I would see it, as far as him brought. But really... I don't, I'm not sure what his counters are. I imagine things that also do like a crap ton of hits. Um, things that have high de defensive uh, traits. That's probably also going to be one that is hard for him to deal with. Because he wants to kill stuff. So he's got to find those models that are low hitbox and kind of... Like low hitbox champions, if he can hit you, he can drop you pretty quick. Um, at least one, two turns, he'll, he'll probably drop you, um, which is really cool. I like that he can attack in both phases. That's really interesting. I like that. And he's fast, which is awesome. Uh, movement's huge in this. I didn't think it would be that big because it's a hex system, but there's a lot. The board's always changing, and the scenarios are different. I've only played life, but the more scenarios you play, I'm sure the more interesting it is, especially when it's split up as far as the objective hexes. So let's kind of just wrapping it up. What do I think about these boxes? So the champion boxes themselves are all good quality. Uh, the boxes are clean looking. Like stores that have this in their, in their store are going to love it because it has a big open thing where you can see what's going on with the models. So you can actually see what they look like. The art is very eye catching. No matter which side I look at this, there's engaging art on all the sides. So stores got to love this for display purposes. Um, yeah, it, lo it looks good. The box is clean looking. The models are crisp, good quality. The only slight issues is I did see it a little bit on one of the other models in this. It might have been uh, Wraith Marid. It might have been one of his followers. But there can be a slight warping in the bases. That can be easily fixed, though. It's not bad enough where I wouldn't play the model. I've seen issues before where it's like, I can't play this model. It, the base doesn't work or the model doesn't sit on it. This is just, there's a slight bend to it. And you could, there's a couple ways you could fix that. You could either slightly bend it back. You could actually heat it up with warm water and bend it back and then put it in cool water. You could use, I wouldn't use a, um, a hair dryer. Uh, unless you're really kind of used to using that because that can melt your like whole model if, if you aren't careful. Uh, warm water is the best way to do it for people who just are trying to bend it a little bit. So I would recommend warm water if you if that really bugs you. 
to bend it back. Uh, look, value, you can't really, getting into this game, so this is enough where there are, there are six models. So I could play a full game with my son, which I probably will do. And if you look at the cost of having three champions each for two players, okay? So you have roughly a $40 box, and then you have, let's just call them 25 to make it easy. That's about $140 to get in the game. Two players have three champions each you can play, and that includes competitively. So the value is there. You get a board, you get dice, everything you need. Uh, the ideal way is if you're going in with somebody else, probably to pick up both starters would be my best recommendations if you have two people. If not, like if you're like me, I just got one starter, and then I just picked up one of each of the champions just so that way I could be like, okay, I can get a feel of each type. I didn't want to not get one of the types and then miss out. So I would recommend doing at least one of each. And Steamforge actually does have a really good deal online right now. I think it was their Adepticon sale where you can get almost everything and it's not for a terrible price. So you might want to check that out if you're interested. But uh, so the quality is really good. Uh, the only thing, like I said, I was disappointed in is I was hoping that the card that you lay down that you put your model's three cards on, I was hoping that that came with each champion box. So that way, each one, I would have a new card that I could put the model. And I understand you don't need that many, but they can tear, they can get worn down, they can break, and I just, I would like to have six of them with this purchase. That way I could have my three and my son could have his three. That, that's one of the things that I didn't like. Um, another concern that I have, and I'll see what the longevity of this is, the board in the starter, it is cardboard. It's a really durable one, but I'm just kind of curious how long that's going to be st sturdy and steady, how long it's going to be durable, and how long it's going to last, because it's good quality, just I don't know how long it's going to last. Um, I used the one at the store, and it's been used a little bit and it's still good quality so that's probably after about a dozen games of me and other people playing it so just one of those things where eventually i think i haven't looked to see if any companies are doing it yet but getting some kind of uh mat so something like this that i have everything on here this four by four that i have for uh a song of ice and fire and I have some for Guild Ball, and eventually I'm gonna have some for Malifaux, uh, which, I mean, this is one of those things where eventually I want a board size for it, uh, because I think it's a, it's almost like a three by two, it's kind of a weird size. Uh, I'll actually have to check the measurements just to see, but it's, it's a pretty unique size that you can't just use something, and it's a hex. So I don't know, but as far as quality goes, great. Price, great. The game plays really fun. Check out our video that we did, uh, whether it's me on Tabletopia against Chris, uh, playing here with my son. It's a fun game. So I would recommend it to anybody. And like I said, even if you play this game, or even if you don't play the game, that's fine. But these are good D&D &D models, right? Or Pathfinder models. Like these are great goblins. This would be great kind of elementals. You have a troll that would be really awesome there. Some kind of necromancer. Uh, you have sorcerers. You have demons. So just really cool models that you could use for D&D &D and Pathfinder if you really didn't want this game. So if I was a DM and I was running a dungeon, I would totally use a lot of these models. They're really cool. Um, the dwarf models for Rodri are cool. Uh, the... I haven't seen any of the models. Uh, this was the model that I thought I would hate the most with Grimgut, and it's a really cool model. So uh, I'm gonna leave it there, folks. Make sure that you like, subscribe, share. Let us know what you think about these God tier models, the ones that I have here. You can also let me know if you have a different model, a different champion that you're like, man, this is awesome. Pete, you gotta check these out. Let me know in the comments, right? Just leave a comment and tell us what you think. Uh, also, basing tips. That was another one where I want to hear what you guys think about that. Basing tips for what you do with these models because some of these champions, there's not a lot of room to play around with as far as basing goes. And 
Uh, check us out on Twitter. Like I said, rage underscore quit underscore wire. We have a Facebook page. If you like our content and you're starting to check us out and really want to support the show, uh, we do have a patron, Patreon page. You can become a patron. Just go to ragequitwire after patreon.com and support the show. We have different levels. Uh, we are going to switch out the benefits if you are interested in that. Right now we have custom dice that after being a patron for so long, you get custom dice and you get extra content and stuff early. But we're going to switch that up. We're actually going to switch to uh, some t-shirts and once I get a chance to make videos with Chris again, we'll put out information on uh, how patrons can uh, get those t-shirts that we're going to put out. So yeah. I like this game a lot, really enjoying it, and had some really good salty moments with, uh, with Chris so far on it. So with that being said, though, thanks for watching. Make sure that you guys don't forget to roll dice, throw salt, and we'll see.